Thank you, Eureka Boza and Planning Commission uh, meeting. This is a special meeting tonight. Today is Tuesday, May 23rd. We are in the auditorium and it is 6 p.m. Uh, we are doing a um, Board of Zoning Adjustment uh, special meeting. Um, we have no public hearing. Um, can we do a roll call? Uh, Peter Graham. Su Susan Hallman. Here. Ann Salee. Here. Fergie Stewart. Here. Joe Hill. Here. And I, Tom Buchan, present. All right, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. S Susan, can I get clarification? Sure. Are we in the planning meeting or are we in the BOZA meeting right now? Um, well, I'm just going to kind of, this, well, Cause they have it's to be BOZA two. and planning, I know. Um, but they have to be two separate meetings. We can't. I know. We but I'm just going to read. I'm just going to read through the agenda and say that we don't have anything for Bo Board of Zoning. So I've just kind of gone through the, I've read through the, the beginning. We, did, we have no public hearing. We've done roll call. We've done Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Board of Zoning Adjustment, there is not one tonight. We're going to move into Planning Commission approval of the agenda. Does anybody have any questions or want to change anything? Because this is specifically for 3022 East Van Buren. Um, I do. I would like to make a motion that we postpone this. Um, on the city's website, it lists the application as a CUP for 3022. Uh, West Van Buren, it does not list what the CUP is for. I think the public needs to be more notified. Um, we will have to have a public hearing on this since it is a CUP. And I would like the motion that we hold off till our next meeting. Um, does anybody have any questions about what Ann just stated? And so the, the, the actual uh, cup form is not visible on the city website. Was that it? On the city website, it just says cup application. It does not say what the CUP is for. Okay. Kyle, can you clarify? Do you know if that, um, is that what was on the city site? I don't have it here in front of me. Uh, so I did not see what was posted on the city website. Uh, Ann just showed it to me. Uh, I'm not sure of the qualifications uh, for posting what the CUP is for. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just take a look here real quick and see what it says. And can I ask if uh, sure. I saw they sent out a lot of letters? Have we heard from, because I don't see any copies in here, so I'm wondering if you've, if you've heard from the neighbors uh, at all. I do have three letters for public comments, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And, and uh, just for the record, Peter is now at the meeting. Oh, if I can get to the right page. Okay. Planning Commission Special Meeting 1, Planning Commission Special Meeting 2. So neither one of them state exactly what it's for. I did post on the... Uh, city planning website that there's a special meeting, but also just for a conditional use permit, I did not specify which type. Okay, so when you actually click on the item, Anne, mm -hmm. it does say what it's for. To hear CUP application for 3022 East Van Buren. So technically, 
if I wanted to know more about it, I would have a couple choices. I would either say I don't know what it's about, or I could call City Hall and say, what exactly is the CUP for? I think, honestly, Susan, I think realistically, if people were looking at that, at that, they would think that was for tourist lodging. I mean, how many CUPs do we do that are not tourist lodging? Well, I, I just think the public has the right to know exactly what this is and be able to come back with comments if they so choose. Okay, so I know where I, what I feel on this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and ask that we all vote on whether or not we hear this tonight, just so that. Can we get a second first? Pardon? Uh, there's a, a second. Yeah, I just need a motion and a second. She's got to, a motion already. Okay, so that was your motion. Does anyone want to second that in order to take a vote as to whether or not we'll hear this tonight for lack of clarity on the city website? So do I have a second? Peter, is your mic on? Okay, sorry. I can turn it on when I'm talk talking. Okay, no, sorry. I just yeah, I couldn't I see the light. That's all. Okay, so I did not get a second. Okay. All right, so uh, approval of the agenda, which is where we were. Does anyone else have any questions about the agenda that we have in front of us tonight? Uh, no. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the uh, current agenda for the Planning Commission. Second. All right, we've got a uh, motion and a second to approve the agenda as it is stated here. Uh, any public comments for this particular item on 3022 East Van Buren? Do we have anybody that signed up? Go ahead, go ahead come up. Okay, you're going to have to come up. To come up. You'll have to come up to the mic and then state your name and your address, please. Yes, yeah, Clyde Leach, 106 Shelton Drive. I'm next door to this proposed, if it's what I'm thinking it is, a gun dealer. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, pawn shop. Gun dealer. Yes. Pawn shop, that's no big deal. Gun dealer, though. Correct. We're going to have a licensed gun dealer. Okay. Well, I just don't like you know, I, I don't like the idea of having a gun shop. You know, it's, that's a temptation, first of all, to a rowdy crowd to for a break-in. It's a residential area. Uh, you know, it's just, I don't think we need a gun shop in Riga Springs. There's guns down here at the Bush. There's a big gun dealer in Bush. He owns three pawn shops. He has probably 700 guns. There's three gun dealers in Berryville. So I think if somebody needed guns, they certainly could go get some. I just don't, uh, you know, think that it's a, a venue for Eureka Springs, and I agree with her. I think there should have been a little bit more uh, notice of it, other than just send something in the mail to the neighbors, you know, two or three neighbors. And that's, that's my opinion. Thank you. All right, so the, um, the public comments is closed. We don't have anyone else, or do you have a letter? Yeah, I've got, okay, go I've ahead. got three letters. Go ahead and read that. Uh, <clears throat> to whom it may concern, my, constor my store, Common Sense Technologies, is the closest neighbor to Eureka Guns, proposed by Keelan Grubb. I'm strongly in favor of the store being located next door to Common Sense for the following reasons. First, I have known Mr. Grubb for several years as a neighbor in the plaza, and a good neighbor he is. He's Consistently helpful, trustworthy, friendly, and willing to look out for what happens in the plaza. Second, his presence has served to drive traffic and increase awareness of our store. He's kept his storefront clean and in keeping with the tenor of our well-maintained and more modern location. Third, I like the idea that he's selling collector-grade firearms, which will naturally attract the quality of clientele I like to see in the plaza. Fourth, while I admit I was a bit hesitant at first about having a store selling guns next to mine, I was fully reassured when I learned of his security measures and his plan for strict adherence to state, state and federal regulations and licenses. I would much rather have firearms transacted in this regulated environment rather than off the record sales to anyone and everyone. Finally, as a taxpayer, I note that the sales tax revenue generated from this high dollar merchandise will be a benefit to the entire community. 
Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions or if I can be of assistance in any way. Respectfully, Arthur Bruno, owner of Common Sense Technologies, uh, 3022 East Van Buren. Uh, hello, my family and I are against a gun and pawn shop opening next door to our home. We have moved here due to the fact it's a peaceful and low crime place. My child is scared of this idea and does not want criminals and criminal activity next door to our home. These types of places attract bad people. Will this gun shop owner let his family and children sleep on the ground in their gun shop? Look at it this way. It would be better if it is open to a location such as the place on 23 where the wind chimes used to be or not open at all. A business like this does not belong where residents live and children walk. Please reconsider what type of danger you're putting families in considering this matter. There is a reason why residents have to be notified in a town meeting of such a place opening next to their homes. This puts my child and family at risk and we are not comfortable with it. Sincerely, Angela Lee, 106 Shelton Drive. Uh, I have received a letter notifying me of gun and pawn shop wanting to open on Van Buren. I am not in favor of this type of business being close to my home. I'm a concerned neighbor who lives in walking distance of this proposed gun and pawn shop vicinity. I walk my dogs around the area. I have a young child who walks around this area. Currently, the area is mostly peaceful with the exception of occasional hotel noise at night, which is only temporary. If I leave my car unlocked at night, nothing bad has happened. Gun and pawn shops attract the type of people that need money and are likely to creep around homes and steal or break in. Often these people are high on meth and any street drug they can get. I do not want this type of activity around my young child, my home, or place of safety. I feel it would diminish my community and be a threat to my family's safety. There are already at least two gun dealers close by, one or two in Berryville and one in Bush. I'd rather take this, I would rather this place move its location to a remote area like the one in Bush. There are also already a few gold and jewelry buyers in Eureka Springs city limits. Once to my knowledge, the Metal Feathers store was burglarized and had merchandise stolen from their trucks. The merchandise it was only yard ornaments. If a store such as this opens with known valuables, it will attract more criminals. Plus, if you look at the front of <clears throat> Castle Pond in Berryville and see all the bikes, lawnmowers, and broken vehicles, who wants that as an eyesore around their place of business? Guns and pawn shops fare better in their own freestanding building, not with <coughs> others around them. I'm not opposed to their type of business, but I'm opposed to it being close to residents, raising families. I would have to get a security system for my home, lock my doors at night, and change how and where we walk and skateboard. I don't feel this is a good location in the city limits. Sincerely, Anita Kimbrell, 110 Shelton. Okay, Kyle, can I ask you real quick, what were the addresses on those three? Uh, 110 Shelton, uh, 106 Shelton, and uh, the neighbor, 3022 East Van Buren in the same building. And those were all sent letters, correct? Uh, I don't think... One was sent to Arthur Bruno. Uh, he's not a property owner nearby, but... Uh, That's at the, the uh, Common Sense? Yeah, he's one of the businesses located in that strip mall. Okay, so you said 110, 106, and 106? Uh, 110 and 106, yeah. 110, 106, and then you were 106, correct? Okay, just want to make sure. Anybody else for public comments? 3022 East Van Buren, uh, conditional use permit, Eureka Gun, LLC. Um, they're seeking a cup in contemporary commercial C2 zone for pawn and gun shop to supplement retail sporting goods store outside of the historic district. I guess is what that said, C conditional uses. Um, does anyone have any questions before we bring them up so they can explain what their store exactly what their plan is for that store? Okay. Who, who, who wants to come up that applied just to kind of give us a, uh, an explanation or a description of what you plan to do in that um, particular location? Well, my name is Keeling Grubb. My wife and I own Metal Feathers next door. Uh, we're not doing a, condition, or a, a conventional pawn shop. We are not looking to pawn bicycles, lawnmowers, and Can you junk. come up just a little bit yeah. closer to you, Mike? We are only going to pawn firearms, gold, silver. We will buy anything of value. We see a big need uh, in our shopping center. We have multiple people a day come through. Uh, the Blue Jar Antique, they're trying to sell him everything from antiques, glassware, guns, everything. There's, there's people hurting for money, it looks like, all over Eureka at this time. 
they cannot go get a conventional loan here in town. The majority of them do not have a normal job that a bank's going to consider for them to get a, a loan. Uh, they come in my wife's store all the time, wanting to sell a watch, cigarette lighters, you name it, guns. Uh, we're, we saw this, so we want to put this in. But we're only going to pawn guns, gold, and silver. We will buy anything of value, and we have several flea markets that are set up that will take anything that we buy and put in their flea market. So we're not going to have boats, cars, junk sitting out front of the store. It's, it's just not going to happen. We're planning on stocking, uh, I guess you would call it survival food, but tents, sleeping bags. We already have backpacks. We have a, sleeping bags. We have a, a tent. We have freeze-dried food for people to buy. Uh, basically all kinds of sporting goods stuff. Uh, we're trying to get fishing poles in there. If you visit Eureka, we have people all the time wondering where they can buy a fishing pole in Eureka. There is no place to buy one. And you're here to, to spend the weekend. Um, so we're going to have fishing poles. Everything that you would use in the outdoors, we are going to have guns, or we'd like to, to be able to sell guns to people. We have to have a pawn shop license to, uh, for an FFL to pawn them. Uh, we're not trying to clutter the neighborhood. We're trying to offer a service to people here that we feel need something that they can't get from a conventional bank. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to carry $100 guns. Uh, I've got a pretty extensive gun collection currently. Uh, we're looking at having more collector grade firearms. Of course, if they bring something into pawn, you don't have a choice. If it's a firearm and you make a deal, you make a deal. If it's something that fits what we're going to sell, it'll be cleaned and put on our shelf. If it won't, it'll be cleaned and put on the internet and sold and shipped off somewhere. Uh, we're, not, we're not looking to cause any danger. We've spent a great deal of money for camera system. Uh, sir, when, when you walked in tonight, we noticed you, you'd been to our place. Our camera alerted you that you were there the other day. If somebody walks up two or three times within 30 seconds, our camera sends a picture to our phones, tells us there's somebody that's peeking in our windows. And then it starts taking pictures every five minutes out, or every five seconds outside, so we know that somebody's there, and we can track them whether we need to or not. Uh, we've put an alarm system in. We have uh, bars made to go on the windows and doors. Uh, we plan on putting any firearms in the store in a safe at night, so nothing's left out that could be stolen and ran off with. Um, I don't see it a big issue for us to do what we're wanting to do there. Uh, we're, we're trying to make it actually safer instead of... Uh, more dangerous. Does anyone have a question? Yeah, for? yeah. Um, uh, Keeling, is that right? Keeling? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 you know, uh, your timing is probably right on the mark right now with our economy the way it's going. And uh, um, the the only question I'd have is that um, you know, uh, would there? I mean, you'd have on-site uh, 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 security cameras, like you said, in the doors and everything. Would there be any? Um, uh, I guess you'd, you'd uh, yourself during the day, you would probably be armed, right? I mean, I'm just asking. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. That makes sense. I just, you know. I'm, I'm just... armed now every day. Okay. Whether um, I'm there or not. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And uh, um, I, I agree with you. I, I deal with a community of individuals that, that usually don't have normal jobs and they don't, can't get loans from banks. I, uh, I try to help them out where I can, but you're right. Uh, there is a need here. Um, so I think I think your business is, uh, is timely in terms of the current what we're going to be going into this year. I think um, uh, I wish it wasn't, but Me it too. is what it is. I've got several friends that own multiple multiple pawn shops around, and we were talking about this, and it, we were looking at something completely different. I had two of my buddies. We were all talking about this, and they were pushing me to to do this. And and he said, "Here's the thing," he said people that need to pawn something, he said they don't have the money to drive to Berryville, to Green Forest, to Rogers, to Fayetteville, to see who's gonna give them the best deal, because the 20, 50, or $100 you give them is all the money they have to their name. Yep. And he said, otherwise, he said, they're gonna go somewhere and sell something that's worth $100 or $500 for 20 or $50, because that's all they can get offered to them. Uh, and this way, you can, make them a, a decent offer for their merchandise and they have a chance to come back in 30 days and pick it up. Yep, that, that's right. 
I, I agree. Uh, uh, yeah. So, how how long have you lived in the area? I just you know the other question. We've been here seven years. Seven years. Okay. Yep. That's great. And uh, and I guess you chose. Why did you choose Eureka to start with? Well, we ended up with a house down here as a second house. Moved here seven years ago full time. I'm actually retired. We had a big construction company and sold it several years ago and had metal feathers. We've got a big farm south of town and uh, I've uh, had some ba bad luck with a doctor now blind in one eye. Mm. So I, I can't get back in the construction business and need something to do. So we just, with, with everybody wanting to sell something and we were talking about this and then just found a big need for Eureka. There, there's not mm. a true sporting goods store. Yep. You know, so yep, well, I'm good. Does anyone else have any questions? I, I have some questions. Um, first question being, it, it's a class four dealership. Is that what it's going to be? Like, are you going to be able to um, buy and sell firearms over line that gets shipped to the store and then someone can come in and buy it from you? Is that how it works? Yes. Um, and they, then they can. They can. And then what is, um, what's the cash and carry? Which firearms are you allowed to walk out of the store that day with a minimal background check with the same day? Not well, a seven day for a handgun, but what would be the... There is no background check. If they pass, you're going to have to call in. Um, most dealers do a call in, and that's something that we're trying to do that's different. We're looking at a, a company called Fastbound. So when we receive a firearm, we actually scan it in and it does an electronic log. So it's a fail safe for us. We can't miss a serial number or anything because that serial number is tracked from the manufacturer to the distributor to us. So once we get it and it's logged in our book, then all that, that gun's tracked right there to that point. You come in and buy a firearm from us, we actually hand you a mobile device or put you on a computer and you're gonna fill out everything. If you leave something unchecked or something that's not correct, it will not proceed. Our program that we're looking at, we're looking at several different companies that do this pro different programs like this, but it will not let us proceed on that, on that sale. And it's going to tell us that you did this or that and it's wrong and, and it's done. You're out of there. We're, we're not going to continue. But if you do the 4473 background check and the ATF tells us, the federal government, to proceed, then we're going to sell you a firearm and you can walk out. In the same day? Like same a, day. Long, a long gun? Or a pistol. Pistol, long gun, shotgun, yep. all of the above. Okay. Um, my, my other question is... Um, they, they could also tell us to hold it for seven days, a three day or a 10 day. And they can tell you that you're on a hold and then they can call us back in that 10 days and tell us it's okay to proceed with the sale or they can call us back and tell us it's not okay to proceed, uh, that it's denied. And at that point you put the firearm up and the ATF automatically notifies the local law enforcement, whether they live, if they were a Eureka citizen then the sheriff or the uh, city police here in Eureka will be notified and they'll come out and talk to him about it. There's something wrong. Okay. If, um, if they're a felon and try to buy a firearm, they're going to, the sheriff's department or the local police department will have a notice within 24 hours and all the paperwork to go pick that person up. Okay. Um, my, my other question is, um, are there going to be sales to residents outside of the state of Arkansas? Yes, if they come in and want to buy something. And we're okay. going to have stuff on the internet. Like I said before, if somebody brings something in that we don't want in our store, then we're going to list it most likely on Gun Broker. And it'll be sold to the highest bidder. And if it's an FFL dealer, that FFL dealer will send us a copy of their FFL. We'll ship that mm -hmm. firearm to them. If that person that buys it's not an FFL dealer, then they'll have to go one, have that dealer contact us, we'll get all their paperwork, send it to that dealer, then it will be that dealer's responsibility to transfer that firearm from there. Mm -hmm. And then I, I have one more question. Um, you did mention that you will be buying things, not the big stuff that will be outside as stated in the, in the notes, but you would be purchasing, let's say, tools? Is yes. that something you would be purchasing? So my question is, is from being a resident here, I notice there's a lot of contractors that have trucks without caps, right? and they have their tools in the back, and as of right now, it's, you know, safe. I mean, everyone can have their tools in the back of their trucks. They have miter saws, they have hand tools, they have DeWalt power tools, and there, because there isn't a high demand of people to do, you know, quick grab and carry, 
And we unfortunately know that pawn shops tend to have a correlation between things that are stolen and things that go for real sale. How are you going to prevent that from happening? Because what it will, what it could do is potentially attract a crowd of individuals, like you said, that are struggling financially when they're walking down, let's say, Main Street and someone's working on a building, two-story building, and they have their truck and all their tools out. What's going to prevent that tourist from walking in and grabbing that DeWalt power tool and walking right up to the power so walking right up to the pawn store right in Eureka Springs and selling it? Nothing. I mean, they can. If they come in and do it, the, the normal mode that we will have is you have to have a driver's license. It has to have your um, residence address on it. We'll have to have a valid phone number. And you take a copy all, of all that and do a buy, what they call a buy ticket. So you take as much information as you can get from that person if you're buying it. The other thing is, is you'll kind of notice if they come in on a bicycle, they shouldn't have a, a power saw with them. <laughs> you know, you've got to be a pretty good judge of character, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and there's going to be people that walk in that we're going to tell them we appreciate them stopping by, but we can't help them today. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a judgment call. It's, it's like any business. I, I do believe that um, all the other aspects of the company that you did mention, I think, is very valuable in this community. The camping gear, the fishing gear the gold and silver. The, the only concern is, as being a member of the community, as my position here is just to speak transparently of the safe, my, my priority here is to look out for the safety and well-being of the community. And that's something that um, is just mentioned in some of the notes and something that I feel like I have to m mention to you and ask these questions about. So thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Ian, do you have anything? I don't have any questions. I just want to say I, I don't have a problem with a pawn shop. It seems like you guys would do a very good job, but I do have a problem with selling guns. Can, can I ask why you have a problem with guns? Well, it sounds like there's plenty of those around, and the fact that we live in a special community, and I just don't think folks, uh, I could be wrong, but for me, uh, I don't think it's a great idea. We would like to have the sales tax for what we're going to do come into Eureka. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to lie to you, we're estimating a couple million dollars in sales right off the first year. Uh, we have a lot of guns that are going to be ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 that I've had for several years. Um, it's not that two and $300 sales. I mean, we're selling collector guns. It's not going to be. And a lot of stuff that we have will be online for sale that won't be shown in a display case out here. Um, and the tax incentive on that, I would think for Eureka would be great. So I have a question. If I come in with a Smith & Wesson M&P 9mm, would you sell it? Would you buy it for me? If we could make a deal, I guess, yes. Okay. Tom, do you have any questions? Okay, I have one question. Okay. Um, and that question is going to be, um, you know, there's a lot of discussion about assault rifle, semi-automatic rifles, what is what and who categorizes one is one type and one is another. Are there any types of guns that you cannot take in? So um, I know there are state laws out there as to what is allowed and what isn't allowed, and they have changed over the years, but um, it sounds like you're gonna accept just about everything. Um, is there any type that you, that you personally wouldn't take or that you can't take by Ooh. state law? By state law? Yeah. No. I mean, state there, law, you there can't are do no it state in. state laws for guns. The only laws are federal laws. And the only oh, federal true. law that we have found, because we, we've been approved by the ATF already. Our, they've okay. already done a, a uh, visit. Our location's fine. Our business plan is fabulous for them. Our security measures are everything plus that they wanted. But we're not going to carry machine guns or suppressors in this store. If somebody came in and had one for sale, I have friends in the business that we'd broker the deal and just send it. They, they would go to Florida is all I can tell you. Okay. To, to the nation's largest gun dealer down there that does nothing but machine guns. Okay, so unless it's something like that, there's technically no, no gun that you would not take in if you could, as long as you could make a deal on it and you felt good about it and it was in good condition. And the person owned it, yes. Yeah, okay. Yep. No, no, just because we'll buy it or pawn it, if we end up with it, I'm not going to tell you it's going to go on our shelves in Eureka for sale. 
Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? No. Okay. So we, um, if no one else has any questions as far as um, related to this CUP, for I uh, actually have one question. Okay. What is the name of the business going to be officially? Eureka Gun and Pond. It is going to be called Eureka Gun and Pond. Okay. I just yep. want to make sure on that. All right, so if no one else has any questions, um, can I get a motion to approve? I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, the application for the conditional use permit uh, of Eureka Gun uh, and Pond LLC at 3022 East Van Buren. Can I get a second? Second. All right, can we do a um, roll call vote, please? Yes, please. Uh, Ann? No. Joe? No. Uh, Tom? Uh, yes. Uh, Fergie? Yes. Peter? No. Uh, Alba? Yeah, so that's three no's. And two yes. Okay, uh, my vote is yes. So? So three and three. Uh, so let me get with you, Keeling, tomorrow. Uh, there's an appeals process. Um, if you're interested in that, I can go over that with you. Yeah, we are. Okay. Yeah, let's meet up tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, uh, meeting adjourned. Kyle, just real quick, that was 3-3? Three, 3-3, three. Three, three, yes. Okay. Dave, how many more, how many minutes, or how, how many minutes do you all need before the next one? Uh, do we have an official time that we're supposed to start, or can we start as soon as we've broke a few minutes? Uh, yeah, I mean... Okay, what do y'all, do y'all need, like, any time, or do you want to just get it going? I'm going to walk my legs a little bit. Okay, yeah, go ahead. All right, so let's give it a couple, five minutes. Five minutes.